What if everything we know about humanity's history is false? There are numerous accounts of artifacts being confiscated by or sent to the Smithsonian, never to be seen again. Is the Smithsonian Institute covering up America's real history? Hundreds of the reports, literally hundreds of the reports, ends by saying the bones have been taken away by the Smithsonian for further investigation, and they never get heard of again. Of the millions of pieces the museum owns, only a small fraction are actually displayed. Forget what they want you to see. What is the Smithsonian hiding? Are ancient Egyptian artifacts is removed from the Grand Canyon? hidden in a Smithsonian warehouse? According to reports, the contents of the cave are sent to Washington, but they mysteriously vanish from the historical record. From stories of giant skeletons to ancient Egyptian artifacts, what is the Smithsonian hiding? At the end of the Indiana Jones film, Raiders of the Lost Ark, the legendary Ark of the Covenant which has been obtained at great cost, is seen being pushed into some government warehouse, never to be seen again. But could such a secret warehouse, filled with hidden treasures and artifacts, really exist? Many researchers insist it does, and believe the Smithsonian Institute is deliberately hiding clues about humanity's true history. It's been called the nation's attic. The Smithsonian Institute warehouses some 150 million items collected over 200 years. Its 19 museums receive nearly 30 million visitors a year. At the time of the Smithsonian's founding, most of the continent had not been archaeologically explored. The powers that be knew that in order to maintain their version of history, they would need a repository for all the artifacts that do not fit their narrative. Could the true purpose of the Smithsonian be to cover up America's real history and replace it with the version the elite want us to believe? Many researchers believe so and point to numerous newspaper articles claiming incredible finds were taken by the Smithsonian, never to be seen again. Stuff like Egyptian artifacts and giant bones. One such article appeared in the Phoenix Gazette back in 1909 that still sparks fascination and curiosity to this day. It told of two explorers from the Smithsonian who stumbled on a mysterious cave in the Grand Canyon, a discovery that would be the link between an ancient world and ours. Inside the cave, according to the article, they found a dugout maze of geometrically perfect tunnels filled with ancient Egyptian artifacts, including mummies. But how could such an incredible discovery go unnoticed for so long? And why haven't more people heard of it? That's because the two explorers who found it were working for the Smithsonian, and the whole thing was swiftly covered up. The fantastic artifacts and mummies presumably removed. According to the Gazette, the Smithsonian Institution sent out an archaeologist whose name was Jordan. And Jordan and Kincaid then began exploring these caves. There are stories and rumors that uh, an expedition was mounted after the discovery, and in one version, 109 truckloads of artifacts were actually removed with very uh, great difficulty from the cavern system. According to reports, the contents of the cave are sent to Washington, but they mysteriously vanish from the historical record. page newspaper story in the 1909 Phoenix Gazette what they reported was that the Smithsonian Institution was doing excavations in the Grand Canyon uh, it was being supervised by a, an archaeologist named Jordan it all had to do with uh, another explorer named Kincaid who had been traveling down the Grand Canyon and what he claimed he discovered was these caverns Inside these caverns were, he thought, and the Smithsonian then later confirmed, according to the newspaper report, that there were Egyptian artifacts, there were Hindu, Buddhist artifacts from India. Uh, they were saying that, you know, this, there were mummies in there, and that apparently they had a special vault in the Grand Canyon where 
they buried uh, some of the the leaders, uh, uh, the people they had left behind with artifacts and things like that, and that the Smithsonian Institution got involved. Uh, they were uh, hauling all this stuff out of these caves, including these mummies, uh, swords, shields, statues. Uh, the Jordan, the archaeologist, he was going back to Washington, D.C., back to the Smithsonian. And, uh, I mean, this is these exciting uh, new discoveries in the Grand Canyon. Today, the Smithsonian will deny any knowledge of these discoveries. And the area where the cave is supposedly located is now off limits. Investigators are further convinced by the numerous Egyptian names given to areas and geological features of the Grand Canyon. Names such as Isis Temple, Tower of Set, Tower of Ra. But what became of the ancient mummies and Egyptian artifacts that were supposedly taken by the Smithsonian? Could they be stored in some secret warehouse? Many researchers, such as David Hatcher Childress, believe it's a possibility. And it's, it's really a lot like the, the first Indiana Jones movie, where Indiana Jones uh, has discovered the uh, lost Ark of the Covenant, and then he, right at the end of the movie, he says, well, uh, you know, where's the Ark? And they tell him, oh, well, don't worry, you know, top men are working on it. Where is the Ark? The Ark is somewhere very safe. From whom? The Ark is a source of unspeakable power, and it has to be researched. And it will be, I assure you, Dr. Brody, Dr. Jones. We have top men working on it right now. Who? Top men. And then the last scene in the movie is this giant warehouse, apparently at the Smithsonian, and the Ark of the Covenant is in this crate, and it's being put in this giant warehouse, and no one's ever going to see it again. But if such a clandestine facility does exist, what other hidden items from our history might be stored there? That's where the story gets even more intriguing. There are numerous accounts of giant skeletons being found across America, only to be taken away by the Smithsonian. In 1912, archaeological excavations of ancient mounds near Lake Delavan in Wisconsin had found skeletons of extraordinary dimensions, some of them nearly 10 feet tall. On May 4th, the New York Times picked up the story. The article tells of 18 skeletons of a quote-unquote hitherto unknown race and adds that the skulls of the skeletons were unusually large. And that was only one of over a dozen similar stories reported in newspapers in the late 19th, early 20th century. So in the articles of the giants that were found in the late 1800s into the early 1900s, yeah, they found a lot of bones. There's some photographs in, in the uh, book that show that they did find something that was phenomenal in size. And I'm not talking one or two cases. There's dozens of them and they're scattered across the U.S. And many times they're related to what's called today Indian mounds. Either in or near the mound, they found these giant skeletons. Giant skeletal remains have been found in Minnesota, Iowa, Illinois, Ohio, Kentucky, New York, and other places around the world, many of which found their way to the Smithsonian, where they were never seen again. Long been fascinated by legends of American giants is David Hatcher Childress. A number of mounds in the Midwest in America were excavated uh, starting around 1850. And in many cases, they would find skeletons of people who were in excess of seven feet tall. The one that was found in uh, Bridal Veil Falls, California, by a group of miners, first they found this wall with very intricate hieroglyphics. They assumed that they were finding gold behind the wall. They broke it down and they found this woman holding a child covered with fur and a strange kind of dust. The same tall female mummified remains have been found in Texas. They have been found in Death Valley. They have been found in other parts of California. These old photographs and newspaper clippings are all that survive of these mysterious giants. So this is the first level of kind of cover-up conspiracy when the Smithsonian got involved. And they got so involved, it got to a point 
where they were, as soon as there was any report, they, they, would set, they employed about 200 people to go out to mound sites, to go out and find any reports and to get all the skeletons to disappear them as quickly as possible. Some years ago, when the Colonel Ben Smith mound was opened by Professor Norris of the Smithsonian, he found the skeleton of a giant which measures 7 feet 8 inches in length. Also, a stone axe was discovered, which was huge. Again, we have the Smithsonian involved here. Uh, this is the time when they were starting really a full flow of going to all the different sites to make sure they recovered the bones. More examples here, seven foot tall skeletons. Uh, again, Smithsonian getting involved. Um, again here, uh, this is quite an interesting one actually, a 10, feet, um, ten foot skeleton skull. But what's weird about this one, it's talking about technology, as corroborative proof of the members now is in the rusty and time-worn barrel of what appears to be an ancient gun weighing between 25 and 30 pounds, resembling a flintlock rifle. This, they said, was picked up beside the skeleton. These bones will be taken out of the cave at the earliest possible date and carefully packed and forwarded to the Smithsonian Institution. Yay! We've got like uh, probably 100 and 30, maybe 150 reports that end with the Smithsonian. No, maybe, I think it might be 250, in fact. Archaeology at that time was in a heyday. There was everybody that had a shovel was out trying to find something. But what's interesting is, is that the finding of these giant mummified bodies and giant fossils and bones, uh, really, you can't pin to any particular location. They were finding them in Greece, they were finding them in Italy, they were finding them in the Middle East, they were finding them in America. And even if you write off a few of those as perhaps a hoax or a misinterpretation of something else, uh, you're still left with a tremendous amount of evidence to show that there were these giant beings at some point uh, walking the earth. I grew up in Anderson, Indiana, and I knew that we always had Mound State Park uh, that I was you know, visited myself as a kid and everything, but nobody ever said that there were any giant skeletons found there. And in this article, it talked about the Smithsonian being interested in making that area a national park because of the finds. And what they found was they broke into an area near the mound that inside were six giant skeletons that were in a sitting position and when they broke into this, the fresh air got in and most of the skeletons just disintegrated into pieces except for at least two of the skulls. There was this 1883 uh, newspaper article <clears throat> about how one of the historians in, in Anderson had one of the skulls and that another one was on display, which back in those days as these skeletons were being found mostly in the late 1800s, they would be displayed in the museums all over the country. Hmm. And then they just started disappearing because the Smithsonian would come in and take the bones, you know, telling them that they wanted to investigate them, and they would never be returned. I even read an article that suggested that they had so many of these that they could no longer store them at the Smithsonian and they would take them on barges out to the uh, Atlantic Ocean and just dump them. And the Smithsonian does not seem to want to come forward to answer any questions about this. There was one man uh, during the period of time that most of the skeletons were being discovered and that's because we were pioneers and we were building houses and they were buried so shallow, you know, three feet. You would find the bones at three feet only. Uh, and there was one man that was making the decision what was being done with these bones. Mm -hmm. And most of them were just gathered up. You know, they would come out and pack them away, put them on a train and send them back east. And then from there, most of them disappeared. What happened to these skeletal remains? Were they stored away somewhere? The last I heard was that some of these things were kept in like um, a forensic vault at the university. And then I ran into an anthropology student at Dunkin' Donuts and got into a conversation with her. And she said that within a, a year or maybe two years ago, they had sent all of these things off to the Smithsonian at which time I just groaned because I've done reviews on two books. I can't come up with the titles right now, but they're both about the tremendous evidence that giant skeletons have been found all over the country. 
uh, going back to the, I think, 1800s. And these were so often shipped off to the Smithsonian and never seen again, never heard of again. Accounts of giants can be found in almost all ancient mythologies. Could giants have really once lived among man? Under these described conditions, plants and animals would live longer, be much larger, and that's precisely what we find in the geologic column, in the fossil record. Plants were much larger, all living systems were larger. We have animals that today have an eight or nine foot stature with a 16 to 20 foot stature. We have insects such as the dragonfly. Today, the dragonfly has perhaps a four inch wingspan. In the fossil record, his counterpart, Meganeuropsis, had up to a five foot wingspan. Everything was larger in the past. There is evidence in the press of huge skeleton findings throughout America, but the Smithsonian claims no knowledge of them or any other oversized skeletons. When you, when you delve into this world, you start to figure out, well, how can the Smithsonian say that they don't have it because four papers said that they came and took them? Now, is their bookkeeping that bad that they can't find these things? Of course not. They know exactly where these things are. But if the Smithsonian does maintain a secret warehouse where incredible discoveries are hidden, the next question we must ask is, why? What purpose might they have for keeping such discoveries secret? Why keep it a secret, David? If, if the Smithsonian confiscated all these artifacts, mummies and uh, tablets and things like that, why keep it a secret? Well, I, you know, there's a number of reasons for that. But part of it is, and, and it's the same reason why uh, a lot of things today would be kept a secret, they're, they're engineering history. And today, history is politically correct. It's not necessarily uh, what really happened in the past. Now, why keep it a secret? That's the part that I don't know. I, I suppose it would change the course of our history. And I mean, if, if it showed that they were from... Egyptian area, let's say, of the world. Some question would be, well, how did they get here? Maybe those questions don't want to be asked. So I think, too, though, that if it echoes the Bible, they don't want people to know that. Coupled with the tools and the metals that were found with them, I, th I think it, it shows, it, it's a conundrum that maybe the powers to be don't want to answer. Many of these finds, if authentic, would call much of established history into question. Not only the history of North America, but humanity itself. Such revelations could be very problematic for the powers that be, whose interest is in maintaining the status quo. It appears at this point that the Smithsonian um, chooses to add, they, they want to keep history as we have been taught. They don't want things to change. And so things that are like an anomaly that don't fit in with their idea of history, uh, those things get bar buried. There is a very true quote by Orwell. He who controls the past, controls the future. Who controls the present, controls the past. In other words, if the powers that be control what we think of as our past, then they get to establish the framework through which we view the present. But to discover the Smithsonian's real purpose for hiding various artifacts, perhaps it's best to follow the money. Today, the Smithsonian operates an interconnected network museums and research centers receiving some 30 million visitors per year, all free of charge. But while the Smithsonian is funded by our tax dollars, much of its funding comes from private donations, most of which come from tax-free charitable organizations such as the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. These foundations exist to perpetuate the work of their elite founders and further the cabal's agenda. Perhaps the best quote on the subject comes from Vine Deloria, a Native American author and professor of law, who stated, It's probably better that so few of the ruins and remains were tied in with the Smithsonian, because they give good reason to believe the ending of the Indiana Jones movie, a great warehouse where the real secrets of Earth's history are buried. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe. And as always, I want to give a big shout out to all my supporters on Patreon and PayPal. Without you, this could not be possible. So thank you.
The world of 1984 is upon us. Big Brother is watching. Today, your online activity is secretly being monitored and recorded by your ISP and various government agencies, not to mention hackers trying to steal your personal information. Everything you search for, watch, comment, or download is being monitored compiled and used to create a digital profile of you. Anyone who researches sensitive information or browses WikiLeaks could find themselves on a government watch list. So how do you protect your privacy in the age of Big Brother and Big Data? Well, you need to be using a VPN or a virtual private network which protects your IP address so you can surf the net anonymously and securely. NordVPN is one of the top-ranked VPN providers and they are sponsoring this video. NordVPN has an ironclad no-logs policy and is based in Panama, outside the 14 eyes. That means it doesn't record the websites you visit, the time you spend browsing, or the files you download. Literally nothing you do is stored. So even if they were subpoenaed by a government agency, there's nothing to reveal. NordVPN has 5,000 streaming servers across 60 countries, making it the number one choice for streaming online content such as this video. Plus, you can access videos that are banned in your country for whatever reason. NordVPN's powerful network can even work in places where VPNs are banned, like Russia and China. With 24-7 customer support and a 30-day money-back guarantee, there's nothing to lose. So go ahead, get secured with NordVPN. Click the link in the description below and use the promo code JMYERS get 70% off the three-year plan plus an extra month for free.